Welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa Caprio. Do you believe in magic? What if you were told that all you had to do was get a little creative and work a magic spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Here on Postcards to the Universe, we will share manifesting, tips, postcards, creativity, abundance, and prosperity. Here is your host, Melissa Caprio. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, creating the life you crave. It's Wednesday. How are you guys doing? Um, I had to run a replay unexpectedly last week, so sorry I missed being here with you guys live. Uh, You know I love being here. I love doing my show. I have a really cool guest today. She's author Donna Conley, and she's going to join me in just a few minutes, and I'm going to be talking with her about, oh, God, a whole bunch of stuff, and we're also going to be talking about her book, Wild Moon Healing. I love the title of that book, by the way. Um, To my regulars, thank you so much for joining me and being with me each week. It means so much to me. Uh, For those of you who uh, found my show and are tuning in for the first time, welcome. I wanted to tell you just a little bit about me. I am an author. I'm an artist. I'm a photographer. And I have a book out, and it's titled Postcards to the Universe, Harness the Universe's Power, and Manifest Your Dreams. And in my book, there are 30 manifesting stories, along with photos that I took of the contributors manifesting postcards. And if you're asking yourself, what is a manifesting postcard? It's kind of like a little mini vision board. I'm sure people who are familiar with vision boarding, right? <clears throat> so I have people create postcards. And I, in the book, I have a, a lot of exercises, and it helps us all get clear on what it is we want to manifest because we're not always quite sure. We just know we want more joy or more abundance or happiness, but what does that really look like? So that's what the exercises are for. And I have it broken down in four main categories, love, money, health, career, but there's so much more. I have all these fun little manifesting games that you can play. So if you're interested, which I hope you are, please go to your favorite bookstore and you can purchase a copy and you can read all these people's incredible journeys of transformation, inspiration, and manifesting. And then you can see some of the photos that I took of their postcards. Each week, I, I ask uh, people who listen to please send me a manifesting postcard. And if you want to know how to do that, if you go to postcardstotheuniverse.com, you can find out uh, how, to, how to create one and where to send it. And if you join up for my newsletter, I also send you a little instructions and a free gift, a free manifesting gift. And if you're on Facebook and you like Facebook, which I still do. You know, I know the young, young generation, they're like, Facebook's for the old people, but whatever, I don't care. Um, Go to Postcards of Love, and you can look and share funny and uplifting posts. So I wanted to tell you guys that I, I officially am starting a workshop, and you're, you should hear a commercial today um, from um, you, finduniquelyyou.com. It's finduniquelyyou.com. Um, the workshop is titled Manifesting Through Gratitude, A Visual Journey. It officially starts July 20th, which is a Thursday evening, and it runs 6 to 8 p.m. It's online, and it's going to run five weeks, so there's 10 hours. And it's about gratitude. So I'm just going to share with you what, what, uh, what it's about. So living, living a grateful and creative life is about following our hearts and embracing more things that light us up from the inside. It's about seeing all the wonderful things we already have in our lives. Many times we forget to see what is right in front of us. By finding the courage to prioritize, nurture, and express our creativity, we add more play and joy in daily life, and we get to experience what we love and cherish in greater depth. When that happens, the universe has a wonderful way of surprising us with even more magic. In this workshop, we cover living in gratitude by using writing exercises and doing a daily visual gratitude practice using our camera phones to help us get into alignment with the energy of abundance. Each section will focus on one area of our life to be grateful for 
Week one focuses on worthiness and self-love. Week two covers health and wellness. Week three looks at our money story and financial abundance. Week four, we go into our personal relationships. That could be family, friends, and romance. And the final week is going to be dedicated to a personal check-in, sharing experiences, and what came up for us, and an open question and answer. I give you guys writing exercises in each area, daily tips, simple and fun creative projects, and photo prompts to help shift our thinking and start living in gratitude by feeling inspired and finding more joy. At the end of the class, there will be an open discussion and a time for questions and answers. And students will be given homework to fulfill during the week, including learning how to make a manifesting postcard for each section of the course. And at the end of the workshop, students will be required to submit their workbook. Oh, it's a 44-page workbook, by the way. And their manifesting postcards to me. Upon completion of the course, you should feel inspired to continue on your journey filled with gratitude in your life. A sense of purpose and well-being in all areas of our life is the goal to finding joy. And gratitude is the most powerful and effective way to do that. So this workshop is for you. And what's fun about it is, too, is we're going to use our camera phones, which I love because I'm a photographer. So... If you're feeling uninspired, if your heart is aching for change, if you're uncertain about your future, if you have no energy for things that you used to enjoy, and if you are thriving on stress and coffee to get through your day, definitely check out my workshop. Go to find, F-I-N-D, uniquely you, U-N-I-Q-U-E-L-Y-U.com, and just look for Melissa Caprio from Postcards to the Universe, and you'll find it. All right, so I hope to see you guys there. Okay, so now to talk to my guest today, I'm excited to talk with Donna. Donna S. Conley developed an integrated approach to teaching people to discover who they are, what they want, and how to love and accept themselves so they can live their best lives. Determined to become an advocate for mental health. She began a career as a life coach, a blogger, podcaster, and wrote Wild Moon Healing while working full-time in corporate America. Donna is working toward her goal of trans transitioning to a full-time career to help remove the stigma of mental health and normalize loving, committing, believing, and respecting yourself. Donna has had a successful career in the human resources field for over 20 years. From a total wellness perspective and addressing people as a whole, she believes strongly in the spiritual aspects of health in addition to physical and mental health. She deeply believes everyone has their own inner magic and can use it to create their best life and inspire others. You can find out more about Donna and what she's doing if you go to her website. It's wildmoonhealers.com. That's wildmoonhealers.com. Welcome, Donna. Thanks for being here with me today. Oh, thank you, Melissa, for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you. I love that you use magic because that's my favorite word ever <laughs> in your bio. I was like, oh, she uses the word magic. I love it because I think we all have our own inner magic and a lot of us just don't know how to tap into that, right? So well, the purpose of the book, your magic is what makes you unique, your authenticity. Um, exactly. So when you the, the moon, you know, people hear shadow work and they get afraid of that. But that's just finding all those parts of you that you've hidden, you know, people think they're broken, but they're not. You're Mm -hmm. just parts of yourself that was hurt one way or another in the past. Mm -hmm. Well, I love it. So the full title of your book is Wild Moon Healing, Harness the Energy of Lunar Cycles to Awaken Your Inner truth. So that's the full title of the book. And I love that because I am always doing like spells and rituals around the moon. <laughs> so I love that. I love that. You know, I love that title. So yeah, you, you brought up a good point. You said that people think of the moon, that that shadow work. And I know you do talk about, you know, um, how to, you know, leave unhealthy relationships and overcome addictions and deal with our trauma. So why don't you share a little bit about the book itself and what inspired you to, to write it, you know, from your own life? Um, well, the book is 
it's heavy on journaling, but there's 47 activities, and it's not all journaling, but mm-hmm. it's heavy on journaling because whatever answers you're looking for, you have it within you. You know, you know what to do. You know what to say. You're just afraid to do it sometimes. And um, sometimes you're so disconnected from your authentic self that you just can't find it. And so the book goes through all the phases of the moon with questions and activities that change as the moon phases change, but everything is looking at you just from different perspectives. You know, so you're going after a goal, but you're also learning who you are and healing at the same time. And uh, so, because life isn't lateral, you know, and it, right. it helps you from that lateral thinking. So many people today, which is where I found myself, you were just in the grind. You know, you get up, go to work, <laughs> you come home, do the dishes, whatever, and next mm-hmm. thing you know, you're just doing again tomorrow. And, you know, you don't really realize what the actions that you take today, how all of your past experiences affect that. And so while the healing helps you, you know, pull, um, pull out your trauma or whatever it is that's holding you back from something and, mm-hmm. you know, helps you learn who you are and love yourself. Because they say love makes the world go round, but I believe it's self-love because if you don't love yourself, you know, you don't have enough love to keep the world spinning, right? Oh, my God. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) That's why the first part of the workshop is worthiness. Got to work on that first or none of the other stuff is going to come, right? If we don't feel worth the respectful relationship or worth being able to, you know, heal our PTSD or overcome our addiction, right? It's never going to happen. We have to find our own worthiness, which is all about self-love. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, I found myself, I was just um, really miserable in any area of my life. I was like, how did this happen? And I started healing and I was diagnosed with depression. I couldn't find a counselor. Literally, they wouldn't call me back or they weren't accepting new patients. And then I would find a counselor, but it wasn't a good fit. And I was like, well, I obviously have to figure out how to heal myself. <laughs> and that just started me on this whole empowering, just to empower myself to do that and allow myself to do that. And it turned into a, a you know, a spiritual journey as well as a healing journey. And I didn't know I was the book when I wrote it. My friends, so they were noticing changes in me and they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, moon work. I'm manifesting with the moon. And they're like, okay, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know know exactly that. what your friends were thinking because I say the same thing and you just get, they're probably like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I a little um, group of sisterhood of wild moon healers and I was writing these monthly moon reports about the energy of that moon and, and plus teaching them little things, you know, EFT and, you know, um, chakras and just throwing all kinds of little things into this, like, newsletter. And so I tore my Achilles. As I, in the middle of doing all of this, I tore my Achilles, so I, was, I couldn't do much, and I was, just had the idea. I'm like, what if I turn these reports? into a book and they were like Mm -hmm. so supportive they're like do it do it do it so and now Mm. my book has won three awards (laughs) congrats that's amazing fantastic isn't that interesting because you're you tore your achilles and then it forced you to have the time to put this into a book. Don't you find that really interesting? Because your Achilles heel is your weak spot on your body. Like if you read the story of Achilles, right? <laughs> that that's what happened to you so that you could manifest this book. I find that really interesting. Yeah, my, my friend Gwen, she um, is like a teacher, a mentor, and a friend, and she told me, she said, you know, they knew they had to slow you down, and that was the best way they could come up <laughs> with it. <laughs> so, book. Mm-hmm. So it's, <laughs> yeah. 
So when did you personally in your own life start seeing how the trauma that you have experienced in your past contributed to how you were feeling on a daily, you know, on a daily basis? Like when did you put those two together? My my first healing modality was EFT, and I was doing it off of YouTube um, videos, and um, I really started a EFT personal practice, and I was doing it for about a year, and I was like, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Mm-hmm. Well, then I found myself in a situation where normally I would have been triggered, and I wasn't. You know, I didn't react. I responded, and then the other person didn't know what to do with that, and I was like laughing inside myself. I was like, Oh, I am changing, you know, <laughs> and um, yeah. my first aha moment was, you know, my sister, my mom, they're very, they're artists, you know, they can mm-hmm. paint, they can draw, and I can't do a, a straight line with a ruler, but I had that aha moment that I've been mistaking my creativeness with artistic ability, and once mm-hmm. I realized I can create, it was like amazing, you know, my everything, my solar plexus, my powerhouse blew up, my creativity center blew up. And, you know, it's like no, no stopping me ever since. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. A lot of people think that they have to have artistic abilities to be creative in their life. And that's not true. You can lead a very creative life and do a lot of things, you know, with creativity leading the way, but not be technically, you know, a painter or a photographer or a commercial artist or, you know, you, you just have to find whatever it is that sparks you, that brings you joy. And that's where you put all your create, creative, you know, um, energy into. And that's yeah. what will blossom, right? So it's, it's interesting that you had that, like, aha moment for yourself. So um, talking about the Wild Moon Healing, what in the book, so how, is, what is, how does that process work? Like, what does Wild Moon Healing mean? Like, how can we, you know, implement those, those things that you talk about in your book to get to know ourselves and heal and all that and transform? Well, it basically um, follows lunar cycles. So at the new moon, you create an intention. Actually, Mm -hmm. even before that, at the dark moon, you you just envision this dream for your life. And it's like the biggest dream that doesn't matter what's fantasy, what's not. You know, it's just what do you want out of life? What does it look like? And you stay in that vision until you actually feel it. Because you can bring those emotions with you out of the visualization. And then each month what you do at the new moon is make an intention or a goal that will get you closer to this big dream. And as the moon is waxing, getting bigger, that's when you go after your goal. But you're also learning about yourself. What upset you? What triggered you? You know, and, you know, you tried this. It didn't work. Excuse me. So maybe you can try something else. And then under the full moon, that's the shadow work. So you've learned these things about yourself as the moon was growing. Well, what can you let go of to make room for something that will bring you more joy, right? So as the moon starts waning after the full moon, that's when you release something. And it can be hard. You know, it can be a person. It can, it could be just establishing a different boundary. You know, that, that's a form of relief by protecting yourself. So Mm -hmm. that's the problem. And, you know, all the questions in the book, so whether you journal or just think about them, you know, they really help you go in. Like one of, one of the views of the book said, I did, I, when I started reading this book, I didn't know it would read me. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, it, it really takes you into deep places to try to find your answers. That's the whole purpose of it. Mm. Yeah. So, so. I'm curious, though, what made you work with the the moon? Like, did you feel that the moon, the cycle in a month, the moon cycle affected your mood? Like, what made you put the two together? You know, because there's other people that do very similar work, you know, about trauma and all this kind of stuff and, and, 
and releasing things and doing all that, but you specifically are working with the cycles of the moon. So were you always like a, like a moon goddess, I'll say, or like, you know, like, were you always like into that kind of stuff? No, you know, I grew up religious. The spirituality was, um, you know, new in, in my adulthood. Mm-hmm. I didn't grow up with that. Um, but I've always admired the moon. And mm-hmm. before my journey became spiritual, I, um, it was a full moon. And I was like, I still haven't done anything on my to-do list. <laughs> so I started mm-hmm. challenging myself based on the moon. Well, let's see what I can get done, you know, but next time it's a full moon. But then I really started getting into the energies of the moon. Um, mm-hmm. My second book that I'm working on, if you want to work with the moon, you have to know about the sun. So I actually get detailed about, you know, Aries sun season, but then there's Aries energy as a new moon and a full moon. Mm-hmm. Um, and planets and things. So, you know, this book, my Wild Moon Healing, it's just like a, a whole platform to get you started. Yeah. You know, I don't go too deeply into anything else other than the moon because it's a lot to take in. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it is. Just, it's yeah, interesting just start stuff. Following the lunar cycles, you can be amazed at how much time you waste, you know, and, and how you mm-hmm. can actually do things to, you know, for good for your life. Yeah. I I did a, ta- a a little self study because I wanted to see how you know how certain times of like a certain weeks you'll be like really you'll have tons of energy and you get so much stuff mm-hmm. done and you just scratch everything off your to do list and then all of a sudden you'll have a week where you're like oh I don't want to do anything and you're procrastinating your energy's really low you know or all of a sudden you'll get like a, a a bug up your butt to like clean everything, like get rid of everything, purge. And so I started for personally, what I did is I kind of like, I would see where I was feeling emotionally and my energy levels. And then I would track where the moon cycle was. And I started to notice that I followed a very specific cycle of the moon. You know, my energy from the new moon was very different from when it was, when it was, you know, a waning moon or to a waxing moon, a full moon to this, but, you know, it's so it's really kind of interesting to see because I do really feel like it affects us. It affects our emotions and, and our bodies. Right. It <clears throat> so it's, does. it's, it really yeah. does. I, I went on that same journey, but then I started asking myself and I'm like, well, if I know that Gemini energy is this, maybe mm-hmm. I change what I'm doing to help that energy, use that energy in my life for something different. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's when I started getting into that, I was like, okay, there's really something to this, you know, aware of mm-hmm. all this out there. And, you know, and it's also not just your inner magic, you know, it's your connection to source angels, God, you know, ascended masters, it's your connection mm-hmm. to the and everything. So once you're completely connected and your energy centers are open, you know, it's just mm-hmm. the, and you're following these lunar cycles, but you're in tune with the energy. So it's like, okay, I know this cancer moon is going to be a little emotional, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, in the habit of learning these things, then you can, you can work with it and plan things differently in your life that uh, just use that energy. Yeah, because you want to use the optimum energy in your in your body, your emotional body, and in your physical body, you know, to, to so that you can accomplish as much as you need to get done, right? So if you're fighting against something, when that it's exa- just the saying that sentence, you can feel how mm-hmm. exhausting that is. If you have to fight against something to get something done, right? You're like wiped at the end of, end of the day but if you feel energized because you're tapping into astrologically in the moon cycles what's going on in the energy you, you know you use it to your advantage instead of it yeah. working against you right yeah, yeah. so yeah and, I, and a lot of people that listen to the show are into to all this stuff you know the astrology and all that yeah so so we're speaking to an audience who you know is very familiar with what, what we're talking about <laughs> yeah you know and yeah. i also talk from um, the calendar year as a lunar cycle you know mm. so like an energy is that spring equinox 
you know, that's the Lunar New Year. Um, mm-hmm. The summer solstice is equal to, like, the first quarter moon of the waxing phase. And the full uh, moon is connected to the fall equinox. And then the last quarter moon is um, connected to the winter solstice. You know, because a lot of people have always made New Year resolutions. Well, the energy isn't there to go big or go home, right? You have to wait for mm-hmm. March to, to do that. <laughs> Yeah, and today actually is the summer solstice, right? The 21st is the longest day of the year, which is today. So it's interesting, the energy. So, yeah, if you're listening and you're interested, look up what the summer solstice energy is and see how you can – where is the moon right now? What what cycle? Where are we in the moon cycle right now? I haven't even looked. I should have looked before the show. (laughs) But I don't even know where we are. (laughs) We had a um, a new moon – just uh, uh, just last week, right? Yeah, when, I think. Uh, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think it was just last week, right? So it was a new moon. Just, just, just last week. So um, I know that uh, you suffered, and and we're gonna we're gonna be coming up to the break here in a minute, so we could talk about it when you get back. But just for you to think about when we take the break. Um, you had um, some depression and you were going to doctors and you kept, you talk about going, you know, sliding into habitual patterns and it just, your depression just, just worsened. Oh, Chris said we're in a waxing moon. So there you go. We're in a waxing moon right now. I just got a little message. (laughs) Um, so I want to talk about, um, you know, how you took these things into your own hands and like what changed for you, because that probably will help somebody who's listening today. So guys, stay tuned and we're going to be back in just a couple of minutes um, and have more of a conversation with Donna Conley talking about wild moon healing. Stay tuned. Everyone has a story. I have a story. You have a story. We all have a story. As I see it, you have three choices. Allow your story to define you, use it to excuse you, or utilize it as a method to empower you. It's your life. You have the power. You choose. Rewrite your story on finduniquelyyou.com. Hi. I'm Melissa Caprio from Postcards to the Universe, creating the life you crave. Do you believe in magic? What if I told you all you had to do was get a little creative and work a dream spell to bring anything you can imagine into your life? Well, guess what? I've got the spell for you. Postcards to the Universe, a global movement for manifestation, is a casting magical tool for you to use whenever you want. How does living in passion sound to you? Join me in my movement where you get to create in the magical playground. Let's think outside the box and do some playful conjuring. By casting out our desires with a manifesting postcard, we explore our hearts and allow the alchemy of our dreams to appear. And don't forget to tune in each week here on Ohm Times Radio with my show, Postcards to the Universe, Creating the Life You Crave at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I share tips on creativity, abundance, and prosperity, and you will be introduced to the coolest guests, trailblazers, mystics, and creatives who enrich our lives. Welcome back. So, yeah, so if you guys heard the commercial, finduniquelyyou.com, that is who I am doing a workshop with which is titled Manifesting Through Gratitude, A Visual Journey, and it starts July 20th, which is a Thursday evening, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. So guys, check it out. Let me know. You know, I'd love to see you there. Okay, so if you're just joining me right now for the second half of the show, I have author Donna Conley on, and we're talking from her book, Wild Moon Healing, and we're talking about working with the lunar cycles to enrich our lives, really. And um, so, Donna, before the break, I was asking you, because a lot of people, and I've been there myself, you know, I have gone through periods of, you know, depression, and the sadness and, you know, that feeling of, is this it, you know, 
you know, you know what I mean? It's like, this is it. This is all I got. And you just feel like uh, another day. So how did you, what made you decide and how did you decide to take the matters into your own hands and change it? Well, I was um, pretty bad off when I went to my doctor and I was like, I don't know what's happening. But every time I, I opened my mouth, I would just start crying. And I'm like, I can't even talk, you know, and, and nothing is wrong. And that's when she was like, oh, I think you have depression. That's what we're going to treat you for. And, you know, the medicine really helped a lot. But through my journey with depression, I've kind of classified depression kind of like um, diabetes, you know, like there's mm-hmm. in one and depression type two. So I, I put myself in this type two category, which is lifestyle. And I really okay. started looking at everything that I was doing. You know, I was smoking a pack and a half of cigarettes a day. I was drinking till mm-hmm. blackout. Um, mm-hmm. It's like, can my life be inspiring to myself or others <laughs> if I'm not doing anything to make that happen? Um, so as I just started, you know, picking one thing at a time and like, okay, now I haven't had a cigarette in almost seven years. Okay, that's great. Next thing, you know. So mm-hmm. I've, I've been sober for over three years, you know, you just work on one thing at a time to kind of figure out who to let your yourself, your authentic self out. Because when you're in mm-hmm. depression, you're not doing anything, you know, authentically. Um, mm-hmm. But, um, you know, depression affects the way you feel, think, and act, but it's not a weakness. It's not an abnormality. You know, mm-hmm. our body is always giving us messages and depression is a message that something's not right Mm -hmm. whether you know whether it be um chemical or lifestyle you know Mm -hmm. be a doctor because it it can be healed yeah and what about now how did you incorporate the Obviously, you made lifestyle changes, but how did you incorporate the spiritual um, nourishment that you needed to make yourself, to take yourself out of the depression and and make yourself feel inspired where you wake up and you're excited about your day, you know? Well, one thing, if you don't like the way something is, then you have to stop doing something, do something differently or just start doing new things. So I was like, well, I need to start trying new things. So I got into what I call healing modalities. So mm-hmm. breath work, a lot of journaling, the EP, um, sound healing, and all of these things. And the more that I did those things and created this atmosphere of stillness, you know, the easier it became to let some of these habitual patterns in my life go. Did you notice... Did you notice Mm -hmm. while you were doing these? Because I have done the same kind of work, a lot of these healing modalities, and I, for me, it it works, you know, and for you, it sounds like it works too. Um, And a lot of people, you know, go about it in different ways. That's why there's so many people talking about different things that they could do. Reiki, I've had guests on who have talked about EFT tapping, which you've mentioned, and just different things to kind of like work with our our energies and our body and our, and our emotional body also. So, um, you noticed, did you notice like right away that you were starting to see shifts and feeling shifts in your life or like, what was your journey with? Because I think people, a lot of people think, Oh, like once you understand it and you're like, okay, I understand it. I'm going to do this. And then you automatically feel better. And I don't feel like it, or at least personally, it didn't happen that way for me. It took time. Yeah, yeah, like it's every change you make has a consequence, right? So Mm -hmm. when I stopped doing the bar scene and drinking and smoking, I found I had no one to do anything with because everyone was still going to the bars and they wouldn't invite Mm me, you know, because they, you know, how does she feel if she, she, you know, we're drinking, she's not, and they feel Mm -hmm. judged. You know, so it was kind of a lonely experience. And, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, you know, you have to be prepared. You're doing something proactive for your health, but, you know, every action has a reaction, and, you know, it's not always positive, you know. But um, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, you're shifting your energy. So, cause I always talk about stuff in a vibrational, like our energy, yeah. we vibrate at a certain level. So we manifest and bring those things in that we are a match to. So when you dropped the partying, the drinking, the smoking, this lower vibration, and they were still there, you guys couldn't meet up anymore because they weren't in the same energetic spot that you have now become in when you started to do your healing work. But yeah, I, I imagine new people came into your life, correct? Yeah, mm -hmm. I attracted these people. I found these people that are mm -hmm. amazing. Trish for my, um, for my breath work and mm -hmm. Kim for my sound healing. And, you know, it's all these different people in my life that helps, you know, help me get out of that. Okay. Now I'm alone. <laughs> right. And, but, but the more you work and say, no, I'm doing what's best for me, for my life, then the more you attract what's better for you. And, you know, that's how manifestation works. You can't just say, mm -hmm. I want this sit there and tap your foot. <laughs> you have to right. do your part. Yeah, you have to take inspired action. You can't just, you know, sit around and wishing for something to be different and visualize it different. And then you go back to the same old stuff and acting the same way and talking the same way and not taking care of yourself. You have to take an inspired action, which it sounds like you did. So uh, now I, I've, I've talked about journaling and I go through cycles. I'm not a consistent journaler in the sense that I journal every day, but if I'm working on something, I'll find like, I'll journal a lot, and and I have found that very helpful. So you have a lot of exercises for people who are people who are listening in your book of of prompts that can help them, like kind of clarify. Yeah, you talk a little bit about that. You want to share some some with us? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I have um, I think there's 47 in there. One of the one of the um, activities is mirror work, which is really. <laughs> Art. You know, you yes. just get them when you sit there and you look at yourself. And at first you start to notice, you know, um, the skin damage or the wrinkle mm -hmm. around your eyes or something. But you have to slowly focus on your eyes. And then you mm -hmm. see, well, look at all that I've done. You know, look at what I came from. And that's mm -hmm. hard. Because once you start looking in your eyes, you know, shame and guilt might come mm -hmm. up too. But you have to... And you have to see where you are now to get over those things. And um, that's like really good um, exercise if anyone has out, mm -hmm. out there want to try. Um, I call yeah. it mirror mirror. <laughs> what do you call it? Say it again. You call it mirror mirror what? Mirror meditation. Mirror meditation. I love that you said mirror work because people who listen to my show know I talk about it all the time. Mirror work. I mentioned it in my first book and in my second book, which the first draft is finished and polishing it as we speak and send, I just sent it to a publisher uh, last week. Um, I talk about daily, a daily mirror work practice because I heard about it from Louise Hay. I don't know who you heard about it from, but I did it and it, is not easy, but between, I think the mirror work and the gratitude work that I did were the two biggest influences that, that I've had shifts in my life from doing that work about my own self-worthiness. I can't describe how powerful it is. So it's funny that you picked mirror work of all of your exercises that you have, because it's not easy, but oh, is it worth it, right? Yes, yes. I have one of my exercises is your life box. And basically, mm -hmm. this box, and you see this person in there, and you get closer, and you realize it's you, but you can mm -hmm. see how well, everything you're doing in your life, your habits are affecting you. And then you, once you find a way in, you invite in your future self. So all three of you are having conversations and mm -hmm. you know, figuring out where you want to go. And it's visualization of seeing your future self and actually having a conversation with that person. It's just mm -hmm. like inner child work. So you don't, when you were talking to the seven-year-old self, you know, mm -hmm. you can talk to your older self as well. And, you know, visualizing that future person and conversing mm -hmm. with that, you know, energetically, that's very powerful. 
Oh, very powerful. Visualization is very, very powerful um, for, for manifesting work. What do you think, just from your own personal experience and maybe some of your other, you know, the, in your community that you've talked to, like, why do you think a lot of us sabotage the work that we're doing? So we're on this healing journey, you know, you're, you're, you're going, you've done all of this, you're, you're doing the work every day, and then, I don't know, for some reason... <clears throat> something will come up or maybe it won't even come up. Who knows? You'll just wake up one day and you'll, you'll do something that sabotages the work you've done. Why do you think that we do that? Um, two things. The first one is fear, you know, fear mm -hmm. of being a fear of, you know, whatever, if you take this action, what is the reaction going to be? And maybe mm -hmm. you're, you can't handle the reaction that you expect. So you just kind of stay stagnant. But the other is false limiting belief. Um, mm -hmm. Once I did enough journaling and enough moon work that I finally realized my false limiting belief is that I am unimportant. So anytime, mm -hmm. if someone makes me wait, you know, they be here mm -hmm. at 10, 1030 or not, <laughs> you know, it's like, I'll be right mm -hmm. down. Well, I'm not important. You know, anytime you go to a doctor's office, they're never on time, but it reinforces mm -hmm. I'm important. And mm -hmm. it's important to do moon work and you follow mm -hmm. these processes, you eventually start to make these connections that you wouldn't have made before. And, you know, those aha moments. And then when you keep digging and you find out that central theme, which mine mm -hmm. was feeling important, that is huge because you can be going towards your goal and then somebody makes you feel unimportant and it's like, oh, you know, and, and next thing you know, you're not doing anything. But mm -hmm. if you're not sure what that was, you know, mm -hmm. then, you know, mm -hmm. no, it's, it's, it's you know, I don't know why I just did that, but there is a mm -hmm. false limiting belief behind it or fear. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. That's funny that you said that because I have, that's, that was always mine too. I'm not important or I'm not as important as that yeah. person or whatever. I'm not as important. Like, yeah, like mine wasn't as much as I'm not good enough. More mine mm -hmm. was I'm not important. Right. So yeah. it would show up in so many ways in my life. <laughs> so many ways for me to say, you know, and it still does. And it still does. Mm -hmm. I, every once in a while it pops up and I have to say you know, like if I'm if I'm in a group and I'm speaking and I'm interrupted, I have to yeah. be firm and say I was speaking like <laughs> I have to stand up for myself. And it's and I never used to do that, but I do it now, you know, <laughs> so so that I'm not important experiences mm -hmm. are not coming as often as they used to. You know, because yeah. now that I've been doing the work, right? I'm sure you're having a similar experience because you're also doing work. I, I am. And and also it could be a chakra issue. You know, if mm. you had issues with feeling safe, mm -hmm. um, you know, chakra is so important. Mm -hmm. You know, it really, if it is not strong, most of the other ones, you know, are going to be pretty weak because it's the foundation of mm. everything you it's you know, the sacral. Call, it's the sacral chakra that that you see that at the the, the root which chakra. The root. Oh, of course, right. Your roots, right. Your root chakra. So, what, do you have any recommendations about stuff that people could do to clear out their, you know, clear their chakra or strengthen their chakra? Well, like some people say, eat a red apple, wear some red underwear. I think if your intention mm -hmm. was things um, is there to, you know, work on your protection or your safety or your grounding or whatever it is you're working on. But mm -hmm. um, moreover, I think meditation, doing like a chakra meditation to help you open your energy, those things, mm -hmm. um, and even going to a Reiki uh, practitioner to help help you mm -hmm. move your energy, get it flowing. But um, the main thing is journaling to figure out why don't you feel safe? Why don't you feel secure? Oh, you stand mm. in because you have you have those answers. You really do somewhere left away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the most important work I think that you'll do is 
working on yourself. And I don't mean it, in, and, and we don't mean it in the selfish, you know, look no. at me, look at me, look at me ways. It is a selfless act because when you are in a good place in your life and you love yourself and you feel that you're worthy of what you have in your life, all you're going to do is spread that out to everybody else around you, right? So everybody benefits from that. It's different than being self-absorbed or selfish or, you know, forget narcissist. That's a whole other end of the spectrum, you know? It's, it's really important work because you can't change anybody else, right? You can only change yourself. You can only work yeah. on yourself. And what's going to happen is, and I have noticed that people, like you said, people were asking you, what are you doing? Because they see it. They feel the shift in who mm -hmm. you are, right? And, 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 and what your, your energy is different and they can feel it. Yeah. So and that, that's the that ripple that you create by loving mm -hmm. yourself. It's, yep. I believe it can heal past generations, mm -hmm. so it can heal your current family, and it can heal generations to come that you don't even, you'll never meet. Just because yeah. of something you did today, one person you smiled at today, so it changed their life. You know, it's, it's, you know, so the more positive and loving you are towards yourself, the more you express that to other people. Mm, yeah. And I've been hearing more and more about people doing generational work. Like you can change the, the generational, um, trauma, even mm -hmm. though these people have passed on, right. Yeah. And you might, you don't even know them just by doing some work. And that's something new that I've kind of been hearing more and more about. So it's really interesting that that, that that's another thing that keeps coming up more. Do you have like a daily practice that you like to do? that keeps you grounded and, and, and inspires you and makes you feel like really good about your life? Well, my, um, my morning routine isn't as sporadic cause I'm not a morning person per se, <laughs> mm -hmm. but me no. neither. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. To, you know, really get in the self love and the air. I light a candle. I have this ornate cone and mm -hmm. I just brush I just brush through my hair and take the time to look at myself and, mm -hmm. you know, about, um, you know, how far I've come. And I always love to do um, meditation. I don't journal every night, um, mm -hmm. I, but I definitely journal on the full new moons for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, but every night, as long as I just take the time to brush my hair and look at myself, that just reinforces to me that I am important. Mm. No, that's good. I think um, that anybody listening can take anything um, that makes them feel like they're taking care of themselves, even if it mm. only takes five minutes, you know, just to, to nurture yourself, to, to love yourself, to take care of yourself, to incorporate that in your daily routine. I mean, the things that we can think about, you know, when you're brushing your teeth or taking a shower, you have to do that anyway, right? To clean yourself. Mm -hmm. Like you can come, you could visualize a whole story. You could do what you were talking about. Meet yourself yeah. now in the future in the past as you're sitting there brushing your teeth instead of thinking about everything you have to get done for the day, yep. right? <laughs> Takes Absolutely. literally five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> And the more we do it, the more practice we do, the more we strengthen that spiritual muscle. It's like anything else. It's a practice and you have to like, you have to make it a part of your routine. And what you'll come to find, find at least in my experience, was when I started doing these daily practices because I'm not a morning person either. So the first hour that I'm awake is me and and my coffee and, <laughs> and quiet and contemplation, maybe journaling, maybe like just visualizing, just chilling, grounding, whatever, you know? And then like, I'll do like a whole, like, I do like a, my yoga poses and my stretches after that. And then working out, I like to row. And I've, I look forward to it now every day. And when I don't do it, I feel different. Yeah. I notice that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love what you said, a daily practice. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone uses that phrase, oh, you have another tool in your toolbox. Mm -hmm. but that's the problem why people think these things don't work. It's because it's in your toolbox. 
You know, if, right. if you have like a tool that everyone has, a flashlight, and mm -hmm. lights might not go out that often. So when they do, you try to find your flashlight. It's not in your junk drawer, and mm -hmm. you go run find it upstairs, but there's no batteries, and then you don't have any batteries. You're like, I'll light some candles, and then you realize you got rid of all your candles for essential oils. <laughs> you know, that <laughs> right. <laughs> is what happens in real life, and you're like, oh, well, I'll meditate now. Well, if you haven't meditated in six months, <laughs> it's yeah. not going to have the effect of calming you down that you think unless you have a daily practice. Mm, yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. Oh God. Yeah. I love my, my more, everybody knows like my, I always put my phone on do not disturb. So oh. every, and everybody knows like, okay, she's, you know, don't, you know, don't bother her. And I turned off all notifications. I get no notifications unless I open up apps. I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, when my phone's working again, it rings and I get texts, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I shut everything off because I had to make that a priority so that I could be a, you know, a better person for myself and everybody else. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some people, uh, two hours, that's a luxury. You know, if yeah. that's, you know, about, you know, when I meditate, I'm, I'm there for 30 to 60 minutes, you know, mm -hmm. like, you, know, you don't do yoga poses in five minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. No. Um, to those people out there going, you know, well, I wish I had the time. You know, you make time you for make... what's important for you and mm -hmm. you realize if you wait your time you you do have time for yourself you just have to mix things around and reprioritize things that are going on people always make pro time for things that they really want <clears throat> yeah. so i everybody says they don't have time mm, no i don't believe you it's not that important to you, which is okay. But yeah, that's fine too. But it's, yeah, if it's important to you, you'll, you'll make the time. So Donna, we're almost like, we only have a couple minutes. Um, what do you want um, us, to, like, what's the biggest takeaway you want to give us from your book or what's your biggest wish for your book, for this book? I wish everyone would start doing some wild moon healing and learn to love yourself. And, you know, that's, that's the biggest goal I have is just, just learn to love yourself, get over whatever is, you know, trauma or whatever is making you mad or feeling guilty. You know, you can heal from all that. And love can't exist where anger or shame or guilt is. So you have to heal those things. Um, but, yeah, I just pray that everyone loves themselves. Mm, yeah, no, it, it's true because the more of us – that love ourselves, like I touched on, the more people will, you know, love, have the love to give in a yeah. healthy way to other people, right? Yeah. We want to give uh, it in a healthy, in a healthy way. Um, now, do you find a lot of people are, are telling you from just knowing you, your friends, family or whatever, are, are following what you're teaching them? Has that been a nice surprise? Yeah, I do know that um, several people um, that have the book and they, they're getting their own practice and stuff. You know, they'll call me every once in a while. I'm like, oh, I don't have to worry about work. I'm glad you tried something new. But, um, yeah, I do. So I have people that are, are doing their uh, daily practice and getting more into journaling and realizing. So that's the oh, yeah. best part. Like, I had this aha <laughs> moment. Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> that is the best. That is the best part when people are saying, "Oh, because of you, I felt inspired, and this has happened." And because that's why we're putting it out there, right? You know, it's not easy to be an author and to write a book and to put it out there. Yeah. So you're not just doing it for yourself, or you would just have private journals, <laughs> right? <laughs> you're doing it right. to inspire of other people, right? So you. So, um, so Donna, the best way that anybody who wants to reach out to you, what's the best way that they can find you? Um, my website, Wild Moon Healers, and that has links to all my social, and it has, uh, you can email me through my website, so wildmoonhealers.com. Mm, thank you. It was such a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you so much. Um, sounds like a lot of the stuff that you're doing is the stuff that I'm doing. So perfect, perfect. Resonated wonderfully. Thank you, Donna. Okay, guys. 
As always, thank you for listening to Postcards to the Universe with Melissa, creating the life you crave. And I'm wishing everyone a wonderful week filled with joy, abundance, and love. Peace.